This will be part one of the overview of the book of Luke. So the author obviously is Luke, the beloved physician. You got 24 chapters, 1151 verses, 25,939 words or around that. And Luke puts the emphasis on Jesus Christ's human nature. His human nature. See, each gospel has the emphasis on something different. Uh, Luke is the longest book in the New Testament. And if you've read the New Testament very much, you know it takes a while to read the book of Luke. So the theme is Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, came to save lost sinners. The historical application, Luke presents the life, ministry, and death of Christ from the perspective of a human. Doctrinal, Luke demonstrates God's heart. Devotional, you have Christ's example of how a human should deal with other humans. So a basic outline, a short outline, could be chapters 1 through 3, you got the fact that Jesus is born of a virgin. You have it told how he's born of a virgin. You got the ministry of John the Baptist in there. And you got uh, talking about Jesus Christ before he started his ministry. And then chapters four, 4 through 8, born to do miracles. You're going to see him do signs and miracles. Signs for unbelieving Jews. Chapters 9 through 18, born to preach. This is where you see him doing the parables and giving out instructions. Chapters 19 through 24, born to die. So you see here his rejection, rejection, his crucifixion, and resurrection. So born of a virgin, born to do miracles, born to preach, born to die. If I could sum it up very shortly, that would be it. I'm sure there's better outlines out there, though. But let's get right into it. Look, and what can we get out of this book? Chapter 1. In this chapter, you see the birth of John the Baptist. And some characteristics about John the Baptist is that, number one, he's great in the sight of the Lord. Do what the Bible says, and you can be the same. Chapter er, Number 2. He drank neither wine nor strong drink. Man, that just keeps coming up in my studies about this, not drinking wine and strong drink. Chapter 3, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Not chapter, I keep saying chapter. Number 4, he prepared people for the first coming of the Lord. You should do the same for his second coming. If John prepared the way for the first coming, you should be preparing the way for his second coming. Get people right with the Lord. You see, John's father, Zacharias, didn't believe the prophecy of John's birth, so he was made unable to speak by the angel. So you see, the angel has power to cause you to lose your voice, and in the book of Genesis, they could even strike people blind. This happens in chapter 1, where John's father loses his voice. He was made dumb and unable to speak until the thing came to pass. And also, in chapter 1, the birth of Jesus is foretold by the angel Gabriel. Some characteristics about Jesus and the prophecy of the angel are, number one, he would be great. Two, virgin born. Three, the son of the highest. Four, he would get the throne of his father David. Five, he would reign over the house of Jacob forever. Six, there would be no end to his kingdom. And Mary asked, how should this be, seeing I know not a man? She said, How's this going to happen, seeing I know not a man? That proves the virgin birth. She hadn't been with a man. And look what Luke one thirty five says. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now chapter 2, you got the birth of Jesus. And there was no room for them in the inn. So Jesus Christ was born in a barn. That's where you get that saying. And he was laid in a manger. 
Luke 2, 46 through 47, And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So even at an early age, you've got Jesus Christ ast astonishing the doctors and the people around him with his knowledge and his zeal for the Lord. Chapter 3, you got the preaching and imprisonment of John the Baptist. In Luke 3, 3 through 4, it says, And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. You will find that his preaching is hard and straight. And if you want to make the Lord's path straight, then get a King James Bible and just preach it straight and plain where everybody can get it. This chapter also gives the genealogy of Jesus Christ after telling us he was about 30 years old at this time. So this is where, this is when he started his earthly ministry. And notice that you have uh, pictures of Jesus in the Old Testament. Men like Joseph. He became second ruler in the kingdom under Pharaoh at the age of 30. Uh, that's a significant age in the Bible. And if Jesus waited until he was 30 then don't get impatient with the Lord when you have to wait. We saw in the previous chapter how at 12 years old, he was already smarter than the doctors. So why didn't he just start then? He waited for a reason. Chapter 4, this is where you'll see Jesus tempted by the devil in the wilderness and also rejected by men. What a start to his ministry. He, this is a big start to his ministry. Right off, you got the devil tempting him. And then there are verses like this in Luke 4:14 4, through 15. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Luke 4:31 and 32. And he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. So in the ministry, you're going to be tempted by the devil. But then you're also going to have people who come and want to hear you you know you're going to have people that hate you the devil's going to hate you but then you're going to have people that love you and even though jesus had the devil on his back and hate haters all in his ear all the time there are some people that will listen to you and you can preach the same words that the living word preached jesus is the living word many times an old preacher will pass down his sermon notebook to a young preacher and that is what Jesus did. He gave you a Bible and said, preach the word. And you could preach the same thing he preached. And in this same chapter, Jesus casts out devils and heals Peter's mother-in-law. And in chapter 5, Jesus causes Simon to catch so many fish that his net breaks. And here's Peter's reaction in Luke 5, 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. When you have abundance of things, don't think that you did it yourself. Come to Jesus Christ and they say, thank you for saving a sinner like me. Uh, stay right when you have an abundance of things. Stay right when you don't have anything. Jesus was going around and doing so many miracles that he went viral. Everybody was talking about him in Luke 5, 15 and 16. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed so sometimes you need to withdraw yourself he could have went out there and healed everybody and signed autographs but he got by himself and prayed chapter 6 jesus heals a man on the sabbath day he proves that the pharisees cared more about defending their belief than they care about people that's the way religious people are today they don't care about people they care about defending their belief so when they come around a Bible believer, they hate the Bible believer because the Bible believer cares about people more than he cares about defending his belief. In Luke 6, 9 through 11, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness. And communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. So they were wanting to kill Jesus. 
They want to kill the Bible believer. They hate the Bible believer. Sometimes people would rather be able to defend their belief than to help someone. Chapter 7, John sends his disciples to Jesus to ask him something. In Luke seven nineteen through 22, it says, And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were coming to him, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. So either John was doubting, or he was just trying to hurry up the process. But Jesus tells the, his disciples to go back and tell John about these things. And I also notice that Jesus said something interesting about John in Luke seven twenty seven and 28. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there has not risen a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So Jesus would give credit to other preachers. All glory goes to God, but you can still compliment another Christian. I worry about people who never say anything good about anybody else but themselves. Chapter 8, you got Luke eight nineteen through 21. Then came to him his mother and his brethren, and could not come at him for the press. And it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. This shows us that Jesus had brothers. So this proves Mary didn't stay a virgin after she had Jesus, as some may teach. The Catholic Church believes that Mary's still a virgin. We also see that Jesus didn't make Mary out to be the great virgin Mary. If he did, he would have went straight to her when she showed up. But instead he says, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. He didn't put Mary on a pedestal. Jesus also calms a storm in this chapter. They had to go down to the bottom of the ship and wake him up. This proves sometimes it's okay to take a nap. I mean, Jesus did it, so. Uh, Luke eight twenty five, and he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. Remember that the next time you're in a tornado. Sometimes we forget in that situation. In Luke 8, Jesus also cast the devils out of the maniac of Gadara. And after this, he tells the maniac of Gadara in Luke eight thirty nine, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Someone who had a rough reputation can be a great witness for God because only the Lord can change someone as crazy as the maniac of Gadara. That would be like Jay-Z and Beyonce getting saved and becoming Bible, Bible believers. And Luke eight forty three through 44, And a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, come behind him and touched came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunched. So she just touched his clothes and got healed. You know, at, the, at a lot of these NBA games, they throw their jerseys off into the crowd, and they go crazy like Jesus wore that jersey or something. Those jerseys aren't anything compared to Jesus' robe. And one day you'll have a robe just like his. In Revelation nineteen fourteen, it says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And you're going to have a new body just like him. But when Jesus was here, they could touch just his garment and be healed. I'd much rather have his garment than an NBA jersey. Chapter 9, you got Jesus sends out his 12 apostles. He gave them power over devils to cure diseases. While we don't have the sign gifts of an apostle today, we have the blood of Jesus Christ, we have direct access to the throne to talk to God, and we walk by faith. And with these, we can fight in spiritual warfare against devils and pray that our diseases will be healed. In Luke 9, 7 through 9, people were thinking that Jesus was John the Baptist risen from the dead or Elijah or one of 
the old prophets. And that says a lot about how Jesus Christ preached because the Old Testament prophets were rough, negative, doom, and gloom preachers. In Luke 9, 10 through 17, G Jesus feeds the 5,000. The miracle that is that he did it with five loaves and two fishes. The Word of God is like that. You may open up to a page and think there isn't much there, but then by the time you're done, there is enough to feed the 5,000 just on that one page. There's enough for you to read it over and over, but yet you still find something new. In Luke 9, 28 through 36, you have the Mount of Transfiguration. That story you have there, this is where Moses and Elijah show up. This is one of the reasons I think Moses and Elijah show up in Daniel's 70th week. In Luke 9, 44 through 45, it says, Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Now look at this, but they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. So that's Jesus telling him how he's going to be crucified. He's going to be delivered into the hands of men and disciples. Don't understand. This is why I don't believe the Old Testament saints were looking forward to the cross. Well, um, when Jesus explained how he would be killed and the third day rise again, they didn't understand. I believe the Old Testament saints were looking for a kingdom. They were looking for Jesus to have a crown and not a cross. They didn't think he was going to have a crown of thorns. Thorns. Luke nine forty nine through 50, And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. So just because someone isn't a part of your camp doesn't mean that they are against you. And I appreciate any man who is on the side of Jesus Christ. He's not against me. If he is saved, we are members of the same body. You have to learn to have grace with others. Most Christians may not understand certain things that you do, but they are on your side if they are for Jesus Christ. It's hard for me to write somebody off who believes different on some things because when they start talking about Jesus Christ, I'm like, we got the same God. We got the same Savior. We're on the same team. We have the same head. If he isn't against Jesus Christ, then he's not against me because I'm for Jesus Christ. In chapter 10, you got warning to unrepentant cities. In Luke 10, 13 through 15, it says, Woe to thee, Chorazin, woe to thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented and sat sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And now Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. So you see, it would be more tolerable for Sodom at the judgment than it would be for America. Because we have had too many good preachers. We have had too much light in the scriptures. This country has turned away from God, and we are going to face the consequences. In Luke ten seventeen through 19, it says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. In the tribulation, when those locusts have tails like scorpions, I'd say the Lord will give those future tribulation saints power to tread on scorpions. We already know the two witnesses is going to breathe fire. So it would be nothing for the Lord to give them this power as well. But that's the first ten chapters of Luke. And I'm, I'm breaking this up into a couple different parts because it's such a long book. And I know people like the shorter videos, the shorter audios, because, you know, people's got stuff they've got to do, and I understand that. So this will be part one, and I hope to finish it off with a part two.